and the, the screams, it was so loud in hell because there was millions of people there and I knew there was millions in other cells and in pits of fire and over in that lake of fire. And they were all screaming at the top of their lungs. So if you've ever been around a screaming person, just one, it's like, it grates you, you know, to hear screams. Well, just take that times millions. It's so loud, deafening, you want to cover your ears and, and you, you want to get away from it, but you can't get away from it. So you get no peace of mind. You're, you're just tormented with that. You want to get away from this noise and be at peace, but you don't get to enjoy that. Like we like to go home at night and be yeah. quiet and be, you don't, you don't get that privilege. I also, I wanted to talk to a human being. Like, where are we? What is going on? But you don't get that privilege either. You don't get to commune with any people. You're denied that. You're, they're kept away from you. So you, you only have the interaction of the demons. You don't get the privilege of talking to a human. Like we get together in fellowship and how nice it is to fellowship with people. We like to do that. You, you're, you can't do that either. And uh, you also are exhausted. I was like, if you've ever stayed up for nights studying for something or you had to work like, and you're just completely gone, if you ever felt that way, we'll take that again times a thousand. You're totally exhausted, but you need to sleep just like you would here. And you don't get to ever sleep. So that alone, you should just die from that. All these things should kill you. The fear that comes over you in this place is so overwhelming because here, you know, God's presence is on the earth. And even if you're in a scary situation, God's presence is here. There, there's no, God's presence isn't there. And it says perfect love casts out fear. There's no love in hell at all. So the fear totally dominates the place. And you're petrified, terrified, traumatized, everything at once. Because you know that you're subject to these demons and you're, you're going to undergo all this torture and torment. They drug me back into the cell and did other gross tortures, which I always, I don't even like to talk about. Uh, just every imaginable gross thing you can even dream of, they would do to you. And they enjoy it. It was as if they had, um, uh, I don't know if pleasure is the right word, but they got, they were just, they were fulfilling something in them. They enjoyed hurting you. And um, I wanted desperately to get out of the cell. And about this time, uh, they put me down on the floor and eat one, each of them grabbed an arm and a leg and was going to rip my legs and arms off. And I was just bracing for this and right then something grabbed me out of the cell and I was placed over next to the fire not in it but maybe a couple hundred feet away from it but near that huge inferno of fire and I knew my wife was up on the earth sleeping and that this was the part that really bothered me a lot I could never get to her again ever I knew that I would never get out of this place and it's it's like here you can't quite grasp eternity. You can't get a hold of it. It's like forever. What is that? Well, in hell you totally grasp eternity. You understand it. You can feel it. You know it. And you know you're there and you will never, ever get out of this place. That's the feeling, okay? Never. And I knew that I could never get to my wife. And that alone, that thought bothered me a lot because, you know, I just said this to her before, but... Uh, if anything ever happened in California, if we were ever separated and there was an earthquake or something, I told her, I'll find a way to get to you. I'll get there. I don't care what it takes, I'll get to you. And I couldn't get to her. I just couldn't get to her. I, I could never see her again. And it bothered me so much to have to feel that. And I thought, she'll not, she doesn't even know where I'm at. She doesn't even know I'm here. How am I going to ever tell her? For eternity? It's just that you can't even live with that thought alone, just to be there forever. You're naked in hell too. That's just another shame thing, you know. Just the whole—you don't have any clothes. And the humbling thing is, you know, God made us as human beings the best creatures that He's designed as humans. He's made us the top of creation. And in hell, these demons have become the lowest form of life that there is and they rule over you. It's so humiliating to have these creatures run your life. And you think, you know, you study all your life, you go to school, you prepare yourself, you try to better yourself in every way, and then these creatures, that they had a zero IQ, okay? That's what I felt, they had a zero IQ. All they knew was torture and hatred. 
That's all. There, there wasn't any mercy. They don't know anything about that. And I thought, these ignorant creatures are going to run my life? Oh, to live with that alone is horrible. And it says in Isaiah 5.14, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and the mighty man shall be humbled. So I don't care how strong you are as a guy and think you're macho or something. Uh, you're nothing in hell. You're hopelessly lost forever. I knew there were different levels of torments and levels of uh, tortures, that there were people in worse places than I was in. And there's a lot of scriptures on that, being um, uh, in different levels. Jesus said that uh, ye shall receive the greater damnation, and ye shall go to the lowest hell. There's a lot of scriptures that Sodom and Gomorrah, that it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city that Jesus was talking to. So if it's more tolerable, in other words, it would be less degree of severity of punishment for Sodom and Gomorrah. So there are different levels and people in worse positions. But any of the positions are awful anywhere. The whole place <coughs> is horrible. I, it's just, a, you know, here we enjoy all the nice things. We get to uh, breathe the fresh air and the sunshine and all things we take for granted. And many people, they don't want to have anything to do with God. But they enjoy all these nice things. They don't realize that if you take God out of the situation, remove God, the good goes with him. See, all good things, and James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. So when you remove God, the good gifts go with him. And hell is, there's no presence of the Lord there at all. So everything we enjoy here, sleep and, and uh, quietness and uh, fellowship and food and comfort, temperature, all everything, you don't have any of that there. You're completely denied all those things, and you have to put up with it forever. I mean, there's no way out of this place. And, I mean, that's just hard to imagine. <coughs> About this time, when I was standing alongside the tunnel, uh, I was below this uh, cavern, like a round cave cavern type thing. And I looked up, and it, was, it got dark, pitch black. But down here it was lit enough because of the fire. I was next to this fire, flames. And I could hear all the millions of people screaming in the fire, begging to get out. And I knew they were going to drag me in there too. And I didn't want to go in there. That's, that would be worse. To, it was already hot enough. But in there, to be burned and to continu continually burn, you know, to feel all that, I didn't want to go through that. But all around this, uh, the walls of this cavern, were all kinds of demons. Every shape and size of demon were like, and I looked around and it was as if they were chained to the walls. I didn't see the chains, but I felt they were attached or chained to the walls, which didn't make sense, but there are scriptures on that too. But uh, they were all different sizes and shapes. There were, again, big ones like 12 and 13 feet. There were uh, ones the size of bears. There were giant rats, everything you hate. Giant rats, like as big as dogs, rats. There were spiders, huge spiders. There were small ones, and there were huge ones, like as big as this, like here. Just huge spiders. And thousands of them. They were everywhere, all over this place. And they all had one thing in common. They hated man. I knew they hated. They had a, enough knowledge to know that they hated man, and they wanted to torment us. You know, all of them. And... Fortunately, they didn't get to me. They were all there, and I was looking at them. There were snakes of all sizes and shapes, gross, horrible snakes, big ones. There were snakes. There was one snake, and I, I don't even tell this because people think it's too crazy, but there was a snake that came from around the corner, and it was as big as a train, as big as a train car. I looked at that, and I thought, I mean, just horrible things like this, all kinds of gross demons of all sizes and shapes 